Hello everybody. Thank you for watching again my channel Cage Combat and Fitness. Um, today's topic, just to get straight to it, is going to be how to defend against multiple opponents and how to defend against multiple opponents with weapons. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this video in two perspectives. One, the perspective of somebody that doesn't practice martial arts and another perspective of somebody who does practice martial arts. At some point they're gonna be fairly similar, but when it gets to the point of the actual defense, it's gonna lean more towards the martial artist. So let's get down to it. Let's start first with a, with a non-combatant, somebody who does not practice martial arts. So let's just say you're going by your business. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're walking down a neighborhood, uh, going to a gas station, um, you're going, um, you know, in, in, in some cases, depending on where you live, you're crossing the border. Uh, most likely, if you're in a situation where you're walking, you're by yourself or you're maybe you and one other person, um, if you know that that area is not one of the best areas, a bad neighborhood, not one of the best locations to put gasoline, in this case, if, if you got to trust your gut. If you feel even 1% that you're in a bad area, here's where we go to the situation where, you know, encountering potential multiple opponents. So, and I'm going to try to divide it up and go as quickly as possible, you know, not to talk you guys' ear off. So let's just say you're walking down a bad neighborhood. For some reason, you're visiting a friend, you're visiting um, somebody, an acquaintance, somebody that you know, even visiting family, but you're not familiar with the area. And you have an idea that it's not, a, it's not one of the best areas to visit. Um, also take into consideration, is it daytime, is it afternoon, is it nighttime? Basically, whatever the situation is, if you encounter a group of people, um, just talking, hanging out, and you get a gut feeling that, you know what, I don't think that these individuals are, you know, doing something positive or should be there to begin with. Just a, a gut instinct. Let's just say you're walking down that street and you, so you say, you know what, I don't want to encounter these people. So you cross the street. You cross the street, keep on walking, and these individuals cross the street too. Don't assume that it's a coincidence. Turn around and retreat. Again, now I know it's taking a long shot, but think of the scenario. Maybe they're not up to no good. Maybe it is a coincidence that they just happen to cross through at the same time and nothing happens. But are you re really willing to take that risk that that's the circumstance? Or do you want to be safe and just take the longer route around? Now, let's just say you're going to a gas station um, that just doesn't seem right. You know, it's more lonelier, it's in a smaller town, or it's in a populated town that's known for not being a very good area. Um, I mean, something I said, I mean, right now we live in a technological age. If you go somewhere and you have a cell phone with you, go, go on your Safari, go on your Google, go on whatever, whatever search engine you use and just look up my location. What is it a safe area? I know, for example, whenever I take my family to, um, you know, to stay at a hotel, you know, be it that we're going for a work function or just for leisure, I'll look up the the area of the hotel if i'm not aware of the city i'm not aware of the place i'm going to and, I, and you know i'm taking my wife and my family to stay over there i'm gonna look up the area and a lot of the times you'll find it um online so let's just say you're you're going somewhere you drive somewhere you park at a gas station <clears throat> it's not the best time to be putting gas but you have to stop anyways you know, look at your phone. Look up the area. I'm, I'm guaranteed at least at least 90% of the time you're gonna find some answers to that area. Um, so if you have to get down, be extra careful. If you see a group of people there, 
that are that just feel like they're not up to uh, up to anything positive then you know don't risk it stay in your car drive away somewhere else for a while until you're ready to go to that gas station and put gas maybe hopefully things clear out so let's say you're somebody who crosses the border you live uh, around the border cities um, and you're crossing and you're crossing by yourself I mean right away you know that's already uh, that already heightens your danger so a lot of people know when somebody's a tourist to a to a town or a city or a different country take that into consideration might want, might want to be in populated areas might not want to risk it so if you're not you're not a fighter you really don't want to risk it because you don't know what situation you're gonna put yourself into now I know my explanation is very broad but most of the time when bad things happen it's usually a very broad situation it's not like the movies where you walk in somewhere and the background music starts where where it's an ominous sound and you realize you're in a bad situation you're not necessarily gonna find like thugs with tattoos on their faces and visible weapons on them or some kind of motorcycle gang that's just something you watch on TV you know something to, to make it obvious that you're um, that you're in a bad situation most of the time when you're in a bad situation it may not seem as obvious it's gonna seem kind of you're gonna be indifferent to the situation where you're not sure if it's just you being too overreacting go by your overreaction it's better to be a hundred percent certain that you're not in a bad situation than one percent uncertain and you are because you could be in that one percent where something bad does happen so now let's move on to our fellow martial artists most of my viewers here that are usually martial artists have practiced some martial art you're just at the same risk if you're a martial artist you know very well fighting two people is already a struggle so if that's already a, if, if you know it's already a struggle and there's there, there's potentially multiple opponents you know that your chances of, of of not being hurt is very slim so in your cases you're a martial artist now the thing about martial arts is that we're trained to perceive we have a higher sense of perceiving a dangerous situation because we can tell by people's body language some people out there really want to hurt you and they want to take what you have and when you're used to sparring you're used to fighting you're used to hearing all these survival tactics by your martial arts teacher we tend to be more careful of our surroundings so we tend to have a more amplified way of perceiving a bad situation of being at a gas station being at a, at a, at a very shady club um, walking down a bad neighborhood um, being in a town in the wrong side of town even if you're going to visiting a Walmart a Target um, if you if you do um, watch some of the news going on now people are loitering everywhere in certain areas so martial artists know this especially the more experienced martial arts that you are you're going to encounter this so now let's just say now this goes for my, my fellow martial arts because if you're not a martial artist and you're in this situation let's just say things are gonna go very bad for you no matter what so you're not a martial artist trust your gut get out of the situation um, don't react with your pride react with survival instincts if you're with your wife your families uh, your kids it's there's no shame in being a chicken you're not being a chicken you're looking out for the safety of your family because if you're targeted and you get jumped most likely there's a chance they might target your family too so it's better to leave with a t with your tail between your legs than to basically not see your family again in the worst case scenario so let's move on you're a martial artist you're in a situation where you've analyzed the situation you're in you've avoided shady gas stations you've avoided shady neighborhoods you've avoided shady towns where bad things just happen during the wrong times but you still find yourself in a bad situation where you are faced with multiple opponents 
because just due to dumb luck, just due to bad circumstance, just due to being the wrong place, the wrong time, you happen to be in that situation. So now it's time to take action. You're a martial artist, so let's let's assume these people just want to jump you. They want to steal your wallet, but they have no weapons. Let's work with this first. So this is scenario, scenario A. You're a martial artist, obviously. Um, when you fight multiple opponents, your goal is to take one person down at a time. And I'm not referring to like the ridiculous movie, movie uh, um, multiple opponent fight scenes where one person attacks at a time. That's not true. In a fight, everyone is going to try to put their punches in, their kicks in. They're all going to want to hurt you at the same time. They know that there's power in numbers. So what you have to do, and this is going to have to go with profile and assessing the situation, is try to find the stronger opponent and try to sidestep your way around that opponent while using your peripherals to keep away from the other two. You want to... You want this fight to be one-on-one -on -one where all your intensity is going towards the strongest opponent and take them down. Now, you gotta use the element of surprise. They're gonna think you wanna run away. So it's okay if you show a little bit of cowardice in the beginning. Like, yes, you wanna be like, hey, please don't hurt me, I'm sorry, what I did. You know, get to a point where you are, you are literally showing some level of tears where it looks like you're chickening out. You're like, I'll give you whatever you want. But if you know that even if you give, even if you give them what you want, they're still gonna attack you, then yeah, you, you're, you're, your biggest advantage is the element of surprise. You're here saying, please, please don't hurt me. Look for your wall. Right here, I got a wall. Back into that wall at some point. So at least you know all you have to wear is your peripherals versus somebody trying to get behind you. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You see, let's just say the strongest fighter is to your, in this case, is my left to your left. Like, no, I'm sorry, you know, please, please, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want any trouble, you know, a situation. And, you know, your element of surprise, your hands are here, ready to strike. You see this person and you just aim, aim for the vital points. You're a martial artist, you understand where the vital points are. You know you can knock somebody out in certain areas of the face, or you can take them down and start striking certain areas of the neck. Now I'm not gonna name them because I, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know if um, out there in YouTube land, you're somebody who wants to use um, these vital points for your advantage to hurt other people. So as a martial artist, you know these points that I'm talking about. Hell, you can look them up. So. You see your opponent, you go straight to the vital points. You stun this person, you take them down really quick, and you move on to the next person right away. I guarantee you, when you do this, the other two people are going to, let's just say it's three people, the other two are going to be wondering, like, what just happened? This, we were laughing at this guy because he was crying for us not to hit him or to attack him, and all of a sudden he's taking one of us down. What's going on? Element of surprise, go for the next one. Then go for the next one. That's in the obvious situation that these people are not armed. And yes, you are using the element of surprise. Now, if you want me to tell you what fighting style to use, honestly, it, it, you know, if you're a martial artist, talk to your martial arts teacher. Ask him the same question. How do I, how do I fight against multiple opponents? Can you put me against multiple students? Just have an idea what it feels like to be attacked by multiple students, multiple opponents. Now, let's just say you're not practicing no more, but you do understand the concept of martial arts. You know, best best martial arts you can look up is um, Krav Maga, which which it, it is a much more dirtier, straight to the point fighting style, where it does implement a lot of speed and a lot of dirty tactics. Krav Maga was uh, was basically founded to train somebody who has no training and give them some tactics right away. Or Sistema. Look this one up. It's a style that Kristen Bale uh, practiced for his role in Batman. You'll see a lot of this protecting the neck 
and protecting this part of the head. And it might look weird when they're attacking, but it's because you're trying to protect some vital points and you're still using all these movements to work around your opponent, multiple opponents. And yes, you are gonna get hit because you're fighting against multiple opponents. Instead of two fists coming at you, if, you could get, if you're getting hit versus one person through lucky shots or through missing a block or whatever, you're gonna get hit by six fists or six feet. So keep that in mind. Don't expect to come out clean. Whatever you see in Taken or whatever you've seen in John Wick, I mean, if you watch John Wick, he gets hurt. He gets hit. It's a bit more realistic. But in reality, that he'd probably be dead, you know. So, but yeah, there, there are some styles there on, on the YouTube world that you can look up where they do focus a lot on multiple opponent fighting. Now, the weapons. So we're at minute 16. We're talking about weapons. So let's just say um, you, you are in the bad situation where you've encountered your opponents having weapons. It's not going to go good for you. I'll let you know right now, it is not going to go good for you. If you try to fight these individuals, first of all, and you land punches and they have weapons, they're going to use the weapons against you. So I just want to bring a realistic situation to light. There's a good chance, you know, you're going to come out very hurt. And that's the best case scenario, very hurt. Now, depending on what weapons they have, most likely people carry pocket knives. And knives are very dangerous because they're very fast. Now, if somebody has a baseball bat, if somebody has a pipe, there is a pivot point where they can hit you. So if somebody tries to hit you with a, with a pipe, they try to hit you with a baseball bat, hell, they try to hit you with a chain, kind of like the melee weapons you see in, a, in a video games, there's a pivot point. If somebody has a, has a bat and you, and you approach them, you, you, you cut the distance right away, that bat's not going to have a lot of um, distance to hurt you with. Now, the thing is, if you're fighting multiple opponents, there's a good chance they're all going to be carrying knives. And obviously, and at some point, they're all gonna, and one's going to be carrying a gun. Now, the question is, are you in a situation where you should fight? Or are you in a situation where there's a chance they just want what you have? They're not going to hurt you. They just want to take what you have. And they don't want to be held on counts of murder. They want to be, you know, they're okay with being held on counts of of theft or on assault so now that's a very tricky question because you don't know you don't know the people that you're dealing with you don't know if the the whole point is to kill you and take what you have and the whole point really was to kill you in the first place so that is a question that's gonna have to come from your gut in that moment but let's just say let's say you want to take you want you want to at least come out alive in this, okay? Well, if, if you're, if, again, if you're a martial artist, then this may, again, may work to your advantage. I'm being very realistic here. I am not trying to tell you that if you do Kung Fu, it's the best Kung Fu. It's going gonna, it's gonna to save you if you, if, you, if you do no Sistema or Krav Maga or, you know, you have the best... Um, strongest punches and kicks you're gonna take everybody down i don't want to say that because most of the people that, that use knives will not just attack your vital points they'll attack your hands they'll attack your arms they'll attack your legs they'll attack everything that you if you're throwing a punch at them they're gonna attack the arm they're gonna attack the hand they're gonna try to stab you everywhere so the best thing you can do in this situation is kind of like the one where in scenario a where you try to fight one of them is element of surprise you try to disarm one of them now i'm not going to tell you to use a martial art book tactic of disarming somebody where you do step one step two step three step four no element of surprise is that somebody pulls a knife on you they're expecting you to cower right away and be like hey man you know no now again I'm only saying this because you have no other option. 
I'm not saying this is your first go-to move. If your first go-to move is to say, hey, here's my wallet, here's this, here's this, I didn't, you know, if they have masks, I don't know who you are, take what I have, it's not worth it for me to, I don't even care, I'm gonna, as soon as you take my money, I'm leaving this town anyways, I don't care who you are, goodbye. And if they just take your stuff and leave, great. You came out alive. But let's just say you're not in a situation, and you're in a situation where like, they're gonna kill you no matter what. They're gonna wanna stab you no matter what. They wanna make sure that they wanna end you no matter what, and still take your stuff. And if you got your family with you, even worse. Being very realistic here, sucks to hear, but here is the option that I have for you guys. Somebody pulls a knife out on you, at that point when they pull that knife out on you and, and they just want to show you that they have that upper hand over you, you take it right away. One way or another, I don't care if you have to grab the blade, who gives a shit? Grab the blade, pull it out, and just start stabbing. You need to start stabbing faster than they intended to stab you. Just hope that one or two of them hesitate in that situation because maybe maybe one of them was serious about ending you but the other two weren't in this situation and again and i don't condone violence i don't condone murder i don't condone any violent act but if you have three people pull a knife on you you have to assume that you're gonna die so person pulls it up on you one way or another i'm not teaching you any technique i'm just telling you clean straight out just take it from them you take it from the blade take it from the blade grab that Grab it, grab it with your cut hand if you have to, and just start going for the vital points right away. You know, don't even worry about the one they took the knife from, go for the other two, and go quick. You have to react faster than them, you have to assume that they are gonna take your life. And you have to react faster than them, let them hesitate. You're the unarmed person that all you want to do is put gas. All you want to do was go into a Walmart and buy presents for your kids. All you wanted to do was, you know, visit a friend, you know, walk into their neighborhood. That's all you want to do. Somebody pulls a weapon on you, they want to kill you. Again, I don't condone violence. Just call it how it is. Now, if, if, if you feel they don't want to hurt you, they just want to take what you have, and you're right, great. That is the best case scenario in scenario B. But if it's not, yeah, you, you have to react. Your reaction and your speed to the situation, your timing is, the, is what's gonna be the difference from your life being saved to it not being saved. And especially if you have your family with you waiting in a car while you're at a gas station. Who knows what will happen? Again, now, I feel this video will give a lot of maybe agreements or maybe a lot of disagreements. Again, this scenario is the best scenario if you just avoid it altogether. That's the best case scenario. Trust your gut. You're driving to a gas station. It's late. You see a group of people just loitering in there. Go to another gas station. Drive away for a while to where there's no people wait till they're gone I mean that, that, that really is your only other option if you want to be a man and say I'm not gonna let a group of people intimidate me well you know what you know your family will know you're the dead man and there's a percentage of that that can happen so again this is coming from me in, in, in my strong opinion of this situation there is, you know, if there's any better answers, look for them. I can tell you, I have not been in a situation where I've been attacked by multiple weapons, you know, and I'm thankful for that. But at the same time, I don't take my family and put them in stupid situations either. I use what I learned in, in, my, in my martial art training in further training that I've, that I've seen and I've said, you know what, maybe this is not a good idea to be here. And that's, that's the survival attack that I can teach, it's just don't be there, is analyze situation. If you think you're in danger even 1%, don't be there. You know, put gas in the daytime. Don't be dumb. You know, 
load up your, if you're traveling, you know, and you have a half tank of gas, fill up your tank again in the daytime with a half tank of gas, then wait until it gets really low. You know, research the area you're going to. If you're gonna visit a, a different city or a different state, um, you're traveling, look up where you're at. I'm fairly aware of the places that, that I go to and the place I'm not gonna take my family to go, you know, there's dozens of Walmarts. I know which Walmarts I'm going to. I know which targets I'm going to. I know which cities are more known to be more safer, you know. Again, 25 minutes in, I don't know if some of you will watch this or not, uh, but I'm happy to hear your comments, happy to hear disagreements. Maybe I'll learn something from you. Maybe you might have a different tactic. Now, yeah, I know I'm gonna hear the, why don't you carry a gun? In this scenario, we're assuming you don't have a gun. If you have a gun, well, hey, by all means, go nuts. In the sense of defending yourself, okay? Not going on a rampage. But I'm getting a scenario of you're a normal family man that doesn't have a bad thought in your head and you're in a bad situation. That's the scenario I'm giving you. Obviously, if, if you're in law enforcement or you know how to use a gun, you have it with you, you're in a bad situation, somebody comes up to you and you pull it out, well, yeah, of course, you're gonna have the upper hand. You have the upper hand weapon. Again, I, I'm, you know, I understand the gun has a thousand times more stopping power than any other weapon. So, all right, happy to hear from you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great night.